You're watching Juno TV. I'm Lauren Toyota, and I'm very excited to be catching up with Lights. Hello. Hi. Thanks for having me. You give me shivers when you sing acoustic like oh, that. Because your you. voice just travels so nicely, and oh. it sounds awesome. Thank you. Yeah. This is an awesome little space. It's so cool. I've never done anything like that. And you can hear everything around you, and it's very cozy and comforting. Come back anytime. Oh, I, love I have you. lots to talk to you about, but the first thing I really wanted to know is I was reading about this little solo songwriting retreat you went yeah. to in New Mexico at a place called... Earthship, which yeah. sounds like where I want to move to. <laughs> so what is the deal with this place? Well, um, it's, it is quite remarkable. Um, my, my dad's an architect and my mom's a hippie. So if you, if you kind of put those together, you get an Earthship. And that's kind of how I was turned on to this. Um, uh, this guy, Michael Reynolds, has been experimenting on the perfect off-the-grid home out in New Mexico. Um, completely carbon zero home. Yeah. And I thought it was just a really cool idea. Um, uh, an idea that could maybe save the world someday, and if it's a comfortable living situation, it's like, why the heck do we all live in our strips, you know? So, you know, I was in, in the process of kind of looking for new scenery when I was writing and looking for new inspiration. I said, I'm going to take a trip and try out an Earth ship. So, packed up my stuff and shipped out to New Mexico on my own. Drove about three hours outside of Albuquerque. It's outside this little tiny town called Taos, which is a really beautiful little artsy town and pulled up to what will be my home for the next week. And it's unreal, like uh, the back of it's backed into earth, so you have geothermal mass, so it's all completely naturally heated and cooled with vents that you control every day. There's a garden inside the house, there's all these windows in the front. And um, I was running my recording rig off solar power. It's all natural rainwater that's reused three times. It's just it's such a cool setup. And um, three of the songs I wrote that week ended up on the record. So it proved to be like the most inspirational trip. So even some of the recording, not on the actual album or just demo recordings, were done yeah. kind of with this solar yeah, power. Yeah, exactly. That is super cool. Could you live there? I would totally yeah. live there. I, I think, I hope that it's something that blows up because it's it's so comfortable. It's like It feels like a normal house, but mm -hmm. you're leaving zero carbon footprint. Is it part of a commune? Like, are there other people that are, there are hippies about, living there? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's a common, yeah, it's it's about 70 earth ships in that area, some older generation ones and some newer ones, some more experimental models, but um, they've kind of perfected it down to what they call, like, the universal model or something that's just this perfect little template of a little single family home, and it's just very comfortable and beautiful. And it's that's really nice. super cool. Worth checking out for yeah. everybody. I'm, I'm going to check it out. Uh, so you experienced uh, the anguish of writer's block to get to yeah. Little Machines. What brought on the writer's block? I think a lot of it was personal pressures I let get to my head, whether that be from my expectations of myself as an artist, you always want to improve each record. Mm -hmm. um, you want to do something even better than the last thing. But then there's also what I perceived as the expectation of the fans and the label. And um, you start to factor in numbers and like hit songs and what you need to do. And I think that all is so crippling creatively. And um, I had to work through just throwing that off and just doing it because you love it. Because that's what got you there in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the passion for... Um, for making music that moves people and that's the point of it it's not to make certain numbers you know so i've really rediscovered what i love about music in that time and I, i'm thankful for um those hard times because something really great came out of it was there one incident that relieved the writer's block like one moment of inspiration that got you going again um i think it was a, probably a few sort of like different molt, like epiphanies mm -hmm. kind of that that, you know, it was kind of going in, in humps and there were moments that I would be writing poetry and be like, I'm really enjoying this again and the next day you get bogged down again. So it's just kind of a battle. And that's what it, feel, what it felt like. But I think one of the major turning points was finding out I was pregnant mm -hmm. and knowing I was having a baby and, and having to really decide where I wanted to go. Because if I wanted to keep going with music, it would be more work. But if I took time off, I would lose everything that I had built over the last six, seven years. Longer than that even. So, um... You know, I, I, I sat down with my team and we really discussed it. And I think in the process of that, really realized how much I love making music. Yeah. And, and it was kind of like, who cares? You have this awesome family. If it doesn't sell a million copies, who cares? You still have everything you need in front of you and just make the record you love. So I, from that point, it was sort of this cool freedom that I felt going into it. Hey, this is Lights, and you're watching Juno TV.